With the second launch of Starship causing a stir, everyone seems to have forgotten an arch rival, United Launch Alliance. They are also looking to deal with the threat from SpaceX by launching a new trump card, Vulcan Rocket. It will be released for the first time at the end of December. This is definitely a huge push for SpaceX's Starship. So, what has ULA prepared for Vulcan's readiness? And can this launch mission help ULA reclaim its superpower status after years of absence from the space race? Stay tuned as we dive into this and more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. ULA has its missing rocket piece in hand at Cape Canaveral, and all systems are going for a Christmas Eve launch to mark the debut of its Vulcan Centaur rocket. A new Centaur upper stage arrived on the Space Coast, a replacement for the stage ULA originally planned to fly on the Certification 1 mission this past May. That initial flight, already delayed for nearly two years, was again put on hold after an issue with a test version of the Centaur stage was destroyed amid a massive fireball in the spring, requiring design changes to ensure a repeat didn't happen during actual liftoff. The path to Flight 1 is clear, said ULA President and CEO Tori Bruno. All we need to do is integrate the stage onto the vehicle. We do all kinds of system testing anytime we touch it, so we'll have to pass all that, get through the wet dress rehearsal, and then integrate the payload and off to space. ULA's been chomping at the bit to get this debut launch off the ground with its primary payload of Astrobotic Technologies' Peregrine Lunar Lander part of NASA's commercial lunar payload services missions. Certification 1 also is carrying partial human remains or a DNA for Celestis Inc.'s Enterprise flight, all to be installed on the Centaur stage that will head out for a permanent home in deep space. Certification 1 has a three-day window from December 24th to the 26th, with early morning target liftoff times because of the needs of the lunar lander's target on the moon. If it misses the December dates, Bruno said ULA was working with NASA to nail down options in the first half of January. The mission is the first of two ULA has to complete before it would be allowed to fly missions for the Department of Defense, and ULA had originally been targeting three such missions in 2023 before the delay. It's also the first of 70 missions stretching out five years for Vulcan, with Bruno only willing to say the contracts were worth billions. It's a substantial backlog, kind of in a way unprecedented in the launch business to have a backlog that large, but also to have a backlog that large before the first flight, he said. Second flight, Certification 2, is targeting either the first or second quarter of 2024, Bruno said. But he deferred to its customer, Sierra Space, to announce a more specific target date. That mission will be to fly the Dream Chaser spacecraft, an uncrewed cargo space plane, that will dock with the International Space Station before returning for a landing back at Kennedy Space Center like the space shuttle used to do. Although the launch schedule for Vulcan has been planned and ready, this still cannot prevent ULA from the possibility of being acquired by other contractors. If I were buying a space business, I'd go look at ULA, Bruno said. It's already had all the hard work done during the transformation. You're not buying a Victorian with bad plumbing. It's all been done. You're coming in at the end of the remodel, so you can focus on your future. These remarks were widely and correctly interpreted as confirmation that ULA was for sale. If you didn't know, we already have three buyers for the Colorado-based launch company. These include a private equity fund, a well-capitalized aerospace firm that is interested in increasing its space portfolio, and especially the Jeff Bezos-owned space company, Blue Origin. Leaving the other two bidders aside, what we are most interested in is the company with the highest potential to acquire ULA, and that is Blue Origin. Jeff Bezos' space company has been rumored to be one of the potential buyers for some time. Many might think that Blue Origin can't even take care of itself, let alone ULA. Indeed, the shortcomings of Blue Origin are undeniable. But once Jeff adds ULA to the plan, the benefits for the company will be substantial. ULA was established in 2006 through the merger of Boeing's Delta rocket program and Lockheed Martin's Atlas launch vehicle line. Since then, ULA has become a profitable enterprise for both aerospace giants. 
thanks to military launch contracts and large annual subsidies from the U.S. Department of Defense to maintain launch readiness for national security missions. In recent years, ULA's dominance in satellite launches was first challenged and then replaced by the rise of SpaceX and the more cost-effective and reliable Falcon 9 rocket. Bruno, who became CEO of ULA in 2016, cut staff numbers and took other steps to control costs, such as closing infrequently used launch pads. However, Bruno's most significant initiative is the development of the large-scale Vulcan rocket aiming to compete more effectively in terms of cost with SpaceX's Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy vehicles, while ending ULA's dependence on Russian-made rocket engines. And the goal that Jeff Bezos is aiming for is this new-generation orbital rocket. It could replace New Glenn if that rocket faces delays for any reasons. It would also be highly beneficial for the launch needs of Amazon's Project Kuiper satellite constellation. Of course, the government-assured contracts that Bezos desires cannot be overlooked. At present, Vulcan is the only replacement rocket for ULA's Atlas V and Delta IV lineup, with only one Delta IV left to fly and 17 Atlas V rockets. ULA will have to juggle several Atlas launches in 2024 with its Vulcan launches as they use the same launch pad. And Vulcan launches are dependent on a steady supply of the new American-made engines for the first stage, Blue Origin's BE-4s, which have their own torturous development run, partially blamed on COVID that contributed to Vulcan missing its original target to launch in 2021. But more than two years later, Bruno said the path to success isn't facing any more hurdles. There are things you've got to get through in the new rocket, like developments, right? which we've just now about finished up. And then, all of everybody, your supply chain, yourself, everybody has to start at the first one. And then you ramp up to a production rate, Bruno said. He recently toured Blue Origin's BE4 factory in Huntsville, Alabama, and expects the supply to keep up with the demand. It's fair to characterize it as probably the largest, most modern rocket engine factory now in existence, he said. So they're in the process of ramping up production rate. The engines are in good shape and they're going to be delivered in time for us to put on a booster and be standing by ready to go. By 2025, ULA looks to bring on a second integration facility in Cape Canaveral so it can prep two rockets at once while aiming for Vulcan's first launch from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. As they move through time, the rate is increasing sort of continuously in that factory in Huntsville and is expected to keep up with us through 2024 and then really be hitting its stride in 25 as we're hitting our higher rate, Bruno said. We're expecting Blue to keep up with us. They're working very, very hard to do that. So far, so good. The BE-4s combine with up to six solid rocket boosters that can bring more than 60,000 pounds of payload to low Earth orbit, an increase over its Atlas and Delta capabilities. A new heavy-class space launch vehicle is not introduced every day, Bruno said. Generally, those things are a decade or two apart, so it takes a long time to develop one. And so this is the end of a multi-year long journey for us. It's going to bring a new capability to the country, to our customers and ourselves, so we're super excited about it. When it comes to competitors for SpaceX, rocket enthusiasts will immediately think of Blue Origin. However, there is another competitor that once dominated the skies for many years and is now gearing up to reclaim the launch market currently held by SpaceX. It's the United Launch Alliance, with decades of experience that is returning to the space race with its Vulcan rocket. Unfortunately, after nearly long times of research and development, this rocket has yet to leave the ground. It seems to be destroying all the glory that previous rockets that ULA had achieved. Where will Vulcan take ULA's future? Is ULA over? ULA was born into an unlikely marriage in 2006 when the Pentagon allowed Lockheed and Boeing to form a joint venture that gave the newly formed company ULA a monopoly on all military launch contracts. At the time, the Pentagon was focused on assured access to space, emphasizing reliable rockets that would fly successfully over cost. ULA essentially operated as an arm of the Pentagon while raking in billions of dollars. However, by 2014, ULA wasn't the rocket industry stalwart it had been since its founding almost a decade earlier, when it had a monopoly on lucrative Pentagon contracts to lift national security satellites into orbit. 
Instead, the company was under intense pressure. Elon Musk and SpaceX were on the prowl, disrupting the industry and threatening to take a large chunk of ULA's government business. Congress was moving to ban the Russian-made engine the company used in its workhorse rocket. ULA's parent companies, Lockheed Martin and Boeing, were growing desperate, and there were fears that they might want to cut their losses and move on from the company. So when Tony Bruno accepted the offer to lead the faltering company, which had recently ousted its CEO, he knew what he was getting into. It was clear they were in serious trouble. This is a company that wasn't supposed to survive. Now, about eight years later, after enduring what Bruno called a quest to completely transform the company, ULA, once in a downward spiral, is experiencing a remarkable transformation. Bruno now says he gave ULA a slim chance of surviving. In the dark period, he saw an opportunity to improve a company that had enjoyed a monopoly for years and gotten complacent. Not having to compete, it extracted enormous sums from the Pentagon, which didn't flinch at the exorbitant prices as long as the company kept up its launch success. However, the launch market is changing rapidly, and ULA's fear has arrived. In recent years, the business of launching spacecraft and astronauts to orbit has been dominated by SpaceX, the rocket company started and run by Elon Musk. SpaceX's lower prices and prolific launch rate have been a boon to satellite operators, NASA, and the U.S. Space Force. This is likely to move the Pentagon away from its previous position with a single supplier. That's why Tori Bruno decided that the company couldn't just sit back while Elon and SpaceX gobbled it up. We had to take the fight to the competitors, Bruno said. You can't ignore the other guy and let the company do whatever they want and have an open playing field. He also knew that he had to get ULA off the Russian-made RD-180 engine. ULA has developed a modern rocket named Vulcan with the aim of replacing their two existing rockets, Atlas V and Delta IV, which were once reliable but became outdated due to their high costs. Currently, the last Delta IV is scheduled for the next year, and although there are still some Atlas V rockets, all of them have been previously booked and assigned to different customers. Therefore, ULA is eager to bring Vulcan into operation. In other words, it can be said that Vulcan will be the primary responsibility rocket in ULA's future determining whether ULA can continue to exist. However, the production and launch process of Vulcan did not go as expected. It's been delayed numerous times in the past since 2020, reaching its peak with its latest postponement. Vulcan's first flight was initially scheduled for May, sending the private Peregrine lunar lander toward the moon. However, it was delayed when the upper stage of the Vulcan Centaur exploded during testing back in March. The incident occurred when the entire rocket had all the necessary engines and structures. This raised doubts about the technical reliability of ULA, the unit directly responsible for this incident. Following ULA's downward trend, we still can't be certain when it'll launch, although Tori Bruno, ULA's CEO, insists that Vulcan will launch by the end of 2023. But as we can see, there are just under three months left till the end of the year. And I bet Vulcan will take even more time. And if Vulcan can't take flight soon, it's truly hell for ULA. Earlier this year, there were leaked pieces of information suggesting that ULA is going to be sold, and if everything goes as predicted, this would mark the end of an era that's lasted for almost two decades. In its current situation, Vulcan not only faces indefinite delays, but also the potential abandonment by commercial customers. The recent launch of the Project Kuiper satellite for Amazon's broadband satellite program took place on the Atlas 5501 rocket on October 6th at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. While this mission was initially intended for the first launch of the Vulcan Centaur rocket, the numerous delays made the project unfeasible. Simultaneously, the upcoming projects for Vulcan, especially satellite missions for the government, are crucial. Any delays in these missions could cause significant disruptions in their plans. Of course, this delay is not only ULA's responsibility, but also the engine manufacturing company serving Vulcan which is Blue Origin. After realizing there'd be no more rocket engine supply from Russia, Tori Bruno sought alternative engine manufacturing partners. One such partner was Aerojet Rocketdyne, a leading company in the industry and a seasoned manufacturer with a rich history in the space business. The other option was Bezos's Blue Origin, a relatively new company but secretly working on a new tool for many years. Finally, in 2018, Bruno chose Blue Origin over Aerojet Rocketdyne. However, this deal did not unfold as smoothly as he hoped. Everything ULA has received up to the present moment truly seems like a joke. Bezos had invested heavily in the BE-4 engine development, needing it to power his own large rocket, which would become known as New Glenn. Having ULA as a customer would help offset some of those costs. Since then, however, Blue Origin has not been the best of partners. A couple years after the BE-4 announcement, Blue Origin changed its public stance on bidding for national security launch contracts. 
Officials said the new Glenn rocket would in fact compete with Vulcan for lucrative military launches. For many engineers and executives at ULA, this felt like a betrayal because without U.S. Space Force contracts, the company would likely not exist. Furthermore, Blue Origin repeatedly delayed delivering engines to ULA. The delivery to ULA's facility in Alabama took place more than two years later than planned. It's unclear why the BE-4 engines are so significantly behind schedule, especially considering they've been under-researched since 2011. This has garnered considerable criticism from the public, directing mockery at Blue Origin by asking, where are Tory's engines, Jeff? The next question is likely to be, when will Tory's rocket launch? Well, delivering rocket engines is one thing, but whether those engines are reliable is another matter. Disappointment struck again when the BE-4 engine intended for the Vulcan flight encountered issues and exploded at the end of June. The hope for Vulcan's early flight is now even more challenging. Anyway, time can't be reversed to change Tori Bruno's mistaken decision. The most crucial thing that ULA needs to do now is to conduct tests for their new Vulcan rocket. There's still a lot of work to be done. That's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comment section below. Your feedback's very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.